Okay, with the World, World Cup in Japan, the Rugby Union World Cup that is in Japan starting in five weeks' time, obviously we have the warm-up tests in the Northern Hemisphere. In the Southern Hemisphere, we've also got the Rugby Championship taking place. Now today, Wales played England in Cardiff. This is the second test between the two sides in as many weeks. Obviously, England won the last test at Twickenham, rather convincingly as well. Um, now we have the return fixture in Cardiff, and Wales have edged a low-scoring scrappy game with some entertainment in there there's been a f there was a few flashes of brilliance but also some controversy and i think the controversy is going to dominate the back pages uh when we come to the news reports tomorrow it's going to dominate the news reports this evening overall in the game i think wales edged the first half england edged the second half but overall i think it was a 50 50 i think it was better suited to being a draw to be honest i think a draw would have been a fair result several key areas where wales win the game yes the yellow card and the try which are controversial help because that gets them over the line with that converted try difference otherwise it would have been a tied game uh, and we'll talk about the controversy surrounding the Anthony Watson yellow card and the George North try later on but where I think Wales won the game primarily try notwithstanding is, is the set piece uh, open play was pretty 50-50 uh, there were some big hits going in. This wasn't a friendly game for the players on the field, I can tell you that. It was a high intense game, if, if not scrappy. But I think Wales won the set play. Uh, the line out for Wales has been a weakness in recent years. Flawless today. Absolutely flawless. Uh, the rolling ball, which has been a strength for England in recent years, malfunctioned catastrophically today. And this is where Wales got a lot of set play ball back. Um, the, the, England could not set up their set play rolling ball at all. Uh, they had opportunity after opportunity with, with the set play rolling ball and it was quite easily diffused by Wales. In every other facet of the game it was an arm wrestle and, and it was a 50-50 arm wrestle. There's a lot of chop and changing with lineups. We know England have already got a settled 31-man squad going to Japan, injuries notwithstanding. Wales are yet to name their Japan squad going on the plane. That I think they're going to leave that later on until the final cut-off point before they name the 31-man squad. Bigger gets the first points, however, on 25 minutes. Yes, it took 25 minutes to get any points on the board. Uh, in recent games between the two nations, points have been scored much easier. Today, it, it, it took a while for points to come. And Dan Bigger is a very capable fly half who can kick goals. Very capable. Uh, he hasn't played a lot of rugby since the Six Nations. Injuries have been a bit of a concern, a bit of wear and tear. He was very good today. He was the general Wales needed. Um... It's a pity that Anscombe is obviously going to miss the World Cup most of next season. Uh, Rhys Patchell, I think, is second or third choice. Uh, Dan Bigger has got to be first choice fly half going into the World Cup for Wales. We know he's on the plane. He's got to be the first choice fly half uh, on today's performance. In in a lacklustre game where every player made mistakes, in Dan Bigger overcooked a few kicks. And some of the tactics, tactical kicking, was a weakness by both sides today. Uh, Dan Bigger was the best player. He was the most committed defender on either side, putting in some massive tackles, not giving a toss about his own personal health and safety. And you could argue some of his tackle technique was different um, and not necessarily textbook, but he, 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 he shut down some England breakaways with his tackling. The Anthony Watson yellow card and the George North try, this is the controversy bit. And if you read the, 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 the laws of the game, the referee and the refereeing team, that includes the TMO and the touch judge, have decided that Anthony Watson has deliberately knocked on the ball. Everyone else in, in the world knows that uh, it's just a knock-on as the result of a tackle. How else is he meant to tackle the Welsh player? Because if he doesn't wrap his right arm round, that is a shoulder charge and that is a straight red. Um, I think it's the wrong decision. Um, I know there'd be those saying, well, he has knocked the ball on and there was a Welsh overlap and technically that is a denying a try scoring opportunity but that's too fine a margin for me I think we're, we're looking a lot at tackle technique and we've seen uh, uh, in the Australia New Zealand game last week a shoulder charge to the head um, we've seen uh, in rugby league as well I know it's the different code but some hits the head where a tackle could have been uh, attempted and the arm hasn't been wrapped we've seen some hits um, and and bad tackle technique in recent test matches and in club games which have resulted in serious injury. I think Anthony Watson couldn't have done, done, done anything else. He's trying to go man and ball. He's trying to wrap up the ball or dislodge the ball while tackling the player and anywhere else on the pitch I would, I do believe that would have been classed as a knock-on scrum if Wales didn't have an overlap. He's been given a yellow card and that has actually been the difference maker in this game. While he's walking off the field he hasn't even left the field yet Dan Bigger sees that there is an overlap and the English aren't paying attention and does a crossfield kick of pure beauty into the arms of George North. The technique there is brilliant. The try is brilliant. Anthony Watson hasn't left the field yet. And that 
is in the laws of the game that if a player is is yellow card yellow carded or red carded and is told to leave the field he has to leave the field before play can can resume and Gauzet the French ref um, is can see that Anthony Watson still on the field and allows play to continue um, that is the controversy and it would have been the same controversy had it been a Welsh player going off and an England try scored in the same way um, I think you have to look at the laws of the game and the referees made a shocker there the, the decision to send Anthony Watson off I would say 70% of the time that is a scrum 30% of the time that is a yellow card deliberate knock on is it the right decision probably not okay but the George North try that should that play should have been brought back and the and the and 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 and, and the penalty given again taken again they would have had to stop play and restart play taking the penalty again which would have been kick for touch line out and then we don't know what would happen or they could have opted for a scrum because that is the attacking team's uh, right to do so and they could have had a crossfield kick by bigger to George North but that try is controversial and that will be debated a long long time uh, half time comes it's 10-0 and for the first time since 2011 at the Rugby World Cup England helped scoreless at half time I have to I have to look at who which team kept England scoreless in 2011 in the World Cup uh, but that is the first time England were held scoreless in 8 years at half time and that's something I think the Welsh can be proud of is their defence today um, they kept England off the try sheet uh, they couldn't keep England off the score sheet but they didn't allow England any tries this time after half time England come out of the gates the, the better side and remain the better side for the entire second half when, except when it comes to set play set play getting line out ball and trying to build a rolling ball was not working it didn't work out the entire game now the only points England get from the boot of George Ford two penalties in five minutes at the beginning of the second half and 51 and 56 minutes and it makes Wales look over their shoulder there's a few breaks Mario Toji has a brilliant break uh, uh, Anthony Watson has an, a, 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 a run down the wing there are a few moments where Wales are looking a bit nervous in defence but they hold on and part of that is Dan Bigger and his defence now whether you agree with, with that being given a try or not you have to admit his technique for that crossfield kick is pitch perfect I don't think Gareth Anscombe if he was fit would have got that crossfield kick pitch perfect right um, this is why I think Dan Bigger is one of the best fly halves in the world for his vision his defence saves I would say two tries today uh, some of the tackles as I say his tackle technique is different to say the least but his defensive qualities today have been proven uh, under the high ball as well uh, it's, it's like having a second fullback on the field now Lee Halfpenny takes over the kicking duties after half time Dan Bigger does go off it looks like he's got a slight shoulder injury and with the Anscombe uh, injury last week and allowing him to play on for so long we know half pe uh, you know we know Dan Bigger is going to Japan uh, next month they should have taken him off as soon as that shoulder started playing up he should have been taken off and rested we know this is only a warm-up match for the World Cup yes the win helps and yes they are now top of the world rankings which is the other note of the day they have topped the world rankings for the second time in a week hopefully this time longer than 24 hours but you don't want to risk your starting fly off and he will be the starting fly off in Japan I have no doubt I don't think Reese Patch was played enough at test level uh, this last 12 months to warrant starting above Dan Bigger the half penny he misses one penalty and he scores a second from a similar range long range kick 75 minutes England do have an opportunity and again the set play fails them now the fact it finishes 13-6 I think is a fair result it would have been a fair result had it finished 13-6 to England there are some areas though that are concerning Wales only scoring tries in one half and that is a trend that has been continuing for quite some time is they perform better in one half over the other it's very rare that you get a full 80 minute performance from Wales in an attacking sense defensively brilliant all game but in attack they're not scoring enough tries yet they are winning games but the lack of try scoring when it comes to the World Cup when you're playing against teams like the All Blacks like South Africa Argentina maybe you know you're gonna have to score tries in both halves the fact you keep the opposition off the try sheet is great but the lack of try scoring that is a concern on the England side of things there is another yellow card whether it's warranted this time or not is is irrelevant they keep giving away penalties the penalty count is above 10 yet again you, you know when you're playing England, England right now with 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 Eddie Jones as coach England are going to give you 10 penalties a game which to have scoring opportunities from the fact that Wales only took two well, technically three penalty kicks at goal when they could have taken a whole hatful means the scoreline is closer if Wales had, had 
taken more kicks at goal, the scoreline could have been 20, 30 points to Wales. And England, they could have completely had a meltdown. England didn't look great today in attack. They could not get attacking ball from set play. It was all off the cuff. And they've got to work on that rolling ball. Wales deserve the win, deservedly go number one in the world. They've won 18 out of 19 tests. That is a record that I think even the All Blacks would be wanting right now because the All Blacks have lost a few tests in recent times and are looking a bit frail and human. Last, not well, the victory against the Wallabies notwithstanding, I think it was 36-0, um, that defeat to the Wallabies last week shows there are weaknesses with the All Blacks and, this, and that All Black side are beatable. Wales, they have to start you know, performing over an 80-minute period because while they are winning games now when it comes to the World Cup, uh, other, the Southern Hemisphere teams will up their game. The Northern Hemisphere teams will up their game. And if you can't score tries in, in, in both halves and you can't keep the scoreboard ticking over, Halfpenny missed a penalty. He could have easily missed that other penalty as well. That is a concern when you're not keeping the scoreboard ticking over. They had opportunities to kick penalties when England were being so ill-disciplined in the game. They chose not to. And there were times when it did backfire. Uh, where they kick for the corner, England managed to turn the ball over, and they could have had three points. They've squandered them. They went for the seven and didn't work. Sometimes you have to kick kick for goal. England, discipline, 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 and set play. Not good enough. Um, I know this wasn't a full-strength England side. There are players missing, but that needs to be a whole better performance uh, for the next Test match and then going into the World Cup. They need to really stop giving away yellow cards. Now, Anthony Watson, it, it's unfortunate, but too many yellows over the last two, three years. It's a recurring disease. In fact, England's discipline has been a problem since 2003 when they won that World Cup. It has been a long-going issue for 15, 16 years now. Uh, it's not going to get cured overnight, but they need to start reducing that penalty count. But thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm going to be interested to see the comments on this one. The try the yellow card of the controversial bits. I'm really interested to see the comments on that. Was it a penalty? You know, was it a penalty? Should it have been just a knock on scrum? Is it a yellow card? And should the try? Should, and do people think the try should have stood? Under the laws of the game, it shouldn't. Uh, and I would be saying that even if uh, an England player had scored it as well. I, I honestly believe the refereeing at times was poor in this game by Gozer, the French ref. And to miss something as obvious as a player not fully leaving the pitch while the game has been restarted uh, under the laws of the, of the game, that that should. That play should be brought back and the penalty should be taken again. But I'm going to leave that there. Thank you very much for watching and I'll have some more videos for you very, very soon.